What's good YouTube? This your boy Chi World back at y'all again with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, go ahead and hit that like button, comment, subscribe, and make sure you click post notifications so you will be notified every time you boy drop some heat. And today we are reacting to another scary video. The channel we watching this from is SSG Animations page. So make sure you go check out his work. Without further ado. Let's jump right into this video. My name is Hyun Jong Song, but since I came to America, everyone knows me as Cindy. When this happened, I was just an ordinary college student, like so many others. I came to this country thinking that America was going to give me a different life than the one I was looking for back home. You know, the American dream. Although, a little bit more. I wanted to be famous. Since I arrived in the country, I made friends very fast. I was always good at talking to people, and everyone used to tell me that I was very nice. I did very well in college, but I also liked to have fun. Of course, when I got here, I also wanted to experience a party, and Halloween parties were a lot of oh, fun for me. Again. Look at <laughs> that night had been special. <laughs> A party hey, this and Halloween right parties here. were a lot of fun for me. That night had been yeah, special. Black, bro. Halloween was my favorite sweat. holiday. I also wanted to experience a party and Halloween parties were a lot of fun sweat. for me. <laughs> that night had been special. Halloween was my favorite holiday, so I insisted my friends go to a costume party. I went to the party with my friends. We laughed, drank, and had a good time. I was dressed as a Playboy Bunny. Nothing out of the ordinary for a night like that. We got back to my house at four in the morning, exhausted and happy. They dropped me off at the door and after saying goodbye, I went into my apartment. I definitely wouldn't have left so late if my friends hadn't offered to bring me back. I plopped down on my bed, too tired to take off my costume. I just wanted to sleep, to think of nothing else. But it wasn't five minutes before the first noise interrupted my quiet. At first, I thought it was my imagination. It was late. I was tired, and sounds in old buildings can play tricks on the mind. But then, I heard it again. Clearer. Closer. I boots. opened my eyes and looked around the room. I didn't see anything strange. But the feeling that something wasn't right was still there. I told myself I was being paranoid. It's just the house creaking. You're tired, I thought, trying to convince myself. But then another noise, this time much clearer, as if someone was moving just out of my field of vision. I couldn't help it. My whole body tensed. I opened oh, my eyes wide. This time, there was someone, a man. Standing at the end of my bed, looking at me, he was dressed as Dracula. My first and only reaction was to scream, on but the voice wouldn't come out of my throat. It was strange. It was like a state of ultimate terror and confusion. I didn't understand anything. I don't understand. Who are you? Still sitting in the bed. What are you doing here? He didn't answer me. He just stood there looking at me, smiling and showing me his plastic fangs as if they were real. My first instinct was to run, but where was I going to run to? I was on the bed and the man in front of me to was standing the side of the near the only exit of the room. I had to do something, and fast. I thought of my phone. It was on the dining room table, just a few steps away. If I could get to it, I could call the police. Listen to me. I can defend myself. I will leave the house. If you try to do anything to me, I will attack you. I know martial arts, and I am not afraid to hit a man. He didn't answer. That boy need a line he just up. looked at me with that smile on his face. I knew I didn't have time to hesitate. Slowly, I got up from the bed, grabbing the candlestick as my only weapon. I walked around him, my eyes fixed on his. 
each step calculated. He didn't move, but his gaze wouldn't leave me. When I passed him, in a second, he lunged at me. His weight crushed me to the ground, and before I could react, I felt his teeth digging into my face. The pain was unbearable. I screamed trying to get him off of me, but it was useless. He started biting my face again and again as if he was a vampire. The fucking psycho was having fun. He wanted to make me suffer. I hit him in the rib and he finally let me go. But before I could get up, he jumped at me again. Once on top of me, he hit me in the head again and again. Until everything went black. Excuse me. Where is your hot sauce bar? Well, we don't uh, have one. Okay. Firehouse Subs has one. Sir, this is not uh, Firehouse Subs. When I woke up, I was in the back of a car. My hands and feet were bound with tape, and my mouth was covered. My head was throbbing, and the pain in my face was still burning. I didn't know how much time had passed, but the worst part was realizing that I wasn't at home. I tried to move, but every attempt was futile. I was trapped. The car stopped, and he opened the back door. He dragged me out and took me to an unfamiliar house. I didn't recognize anything. He threw me on the floor of a dirty, dark basement. I felt cold, but most of all, I felt afraid. The tape in my mouth was loose. I could try to free myself, but I didn't want him to notice. I had only one chance to scream as loud as I could, and this wasn't the time. Not yet. I wonder how she gonna Hours get out of this. passed in the darkness. I was alone, trembling, waiting for him to come back. Then I heard footsteps. He was coming down the stairs. When I saw him, his face no longer had the smile it had before. He was furious. Without saying anything, he grabbed me and started hitting me again. But this time, it wasn't just with his fist. He pulled out a knife and plunged it into my leg. I felt a wrenching pain that left me breathless. Then, with the same coldness, he went on to stab my arms. The pain was unbearable. I thought I was going to die. I had no way out. This man was going to kill me. But first, he was going to extend my life as long as he could. Only to torture me a little more. I was surrendered. Morally destroyed. But at that moment, I heard a sound that gave me a little hope. Someone was knocking at the door. The man stood up angrily. He took off his blood-stained overalls and threw them on the floor while wiping his face with a dirty rag. After that, oh, he ran out of the basement to answer the door. It was a neighbor. I heard them talking. The neighbor seemed casual, perhaps unsuspecting. My heart was pounding. If the neighbor realized something was wrong, maybe, just maybe he could save me. I frantically pulled loose the tape out of my mouth by rubbing it against the floor. And I screamed. I screamed as loud as I could. My scream was weakened, but I didn't care. I had to generate as much noise as I could. But then, the worst happened. I heard the door close. Oh. I don't know if the neighbor didn't hear me, or just decided not to get involved. But the door had closed and I heard footsteps coming slowly towards me. Suddenly, the man came back down to the basement, his face full of fury. Just as he was leaving, he almost heard you. After that, the man kept beating me. He was still torturing me, well, but problem. this time it was harder for him to control himself. I knew what was coming next. He was ready to finish where he had started. After several minutes, his blows became weaker. He looked visibly tired. 
Then he pulled a knife from his pocket and was ready to plunge it into my chest. At that moment, when my fate seemed sealed, someone knocked on the door again, but more violently. The man froze, and for the first time, I saw him hesitate. Nervous, he stood still and did nothing, and the knocks on the door turned into kicks. Yeah. The rapid footsteps and voices coming from upstairs were unmistakable. The police had arrived. I don't know how, I don't know why, but they had come. He tried to run, but it was too late. I heard the officers shouting and banging on the door. The police entered the house, and in an instant, he was reduced to the ground. They arrested him as he continued to struggle, but there was no escape for him. The neighbor had heard my screams. He knew that my husband had no children or wife. He knew something was wrong. So he pretended not to hear the screams so that he could call the police. They saved me. I could barely process what had happened as they took me to the hospital. The paramedics tended to my wounds. The pain was constant, but the worst was over. They got you out of I survived. Hey. I don't know how or why, but I did. And as they carried me away from that place, all I could think about was how close I came to losing everything. That night took so much from me. It took away my peace of mind, my confidence and my happiness. But it didn't take away my life. And you know, every time I think about that day, I think it could have ended much, much worse. Yeah. This story is based on the crime of Hyung Jong Song, a South Korean student who disappeared under mysterious circumstances in 2001. Oh. Hyung Jong Song was a bright 21 year old student attending the University of Kansas. Unlike in this story, Cindy was never found and is presumed dead. This story assumes a better world in which this young student was found and justice was done against the criminal who was never actually arrested and never paid for his crime. Here's why you should switch from Google to Ocean Damn, Hero. find out who did it? That shit crazy as hell. That crazy. I know that shit was based on truth. Hello, my name is Martin. When I was young, I always felt I had a responsibility to the elderly. I was raised by my grandparents, and I'm not going to lie to you. I enjoyed taking care of them since I was an adult. Unfortunately, yeah, studying yeah, was yeah. never my thing, and I, I to you. felt I had a responsibility to the elderly. I was raised by my grandparents, and I'm not going to lie. You got to let that go, bro. When it get that bad, they go ball. You just got to shave it all off. I tell you. Yeah. I enjoyed taking care of them since I was an adult. Unfortunately, studying was never my thing, and I never did anything about my desire to take care of elderly people. Until an opportunity came along. My grandfather got me a job in the nursing home that he managed all his life, but as a caregiver. Needless to say, I accepted immediately. At that moment, I wondered, what was the worst thing that could happen? <sighs> Not even in my most terrifying dreams could I imagine what was going to happen. To begin with, I must admit that the job wasn't exactly what I expected. My nights were long and lonely only interrupted by the occasional room bell or an elderly person needing help going to the bathroom. It's nothing that couldn't be handled. And, uh, taking care of the routine cars. became quite tedious. I wasn't as passionate as I used to be about being around old people, but I still was a little. I was used to it. Most nights I would simply make my rounds, check that everything was in order, and settle into the watch room for the rest of the shift. However, that night, was different. It was close to two in the morning when I heard the first noise. I was finishing my rounds and, as usual, the halls were completely silent. 
I admit the place was pretty creepy, and the silence was scarier than the noises. But that silence was interrupted by a distant sound. Something at first I, I couldn't identify. It sounded like a whisper, or maybe the dragging of something heavy on the floor. I stopped and listened intently, hoping to hear it again. I would have been out of the... But all was silent again. I would have been out of the... I decided to ignore it, thinking that maybe it had been my imagination. The minutes passed slowly until I heard the doorbell of a room. I approached room 23, Rupert's room, an 82-year-old man who could barely move by himself. Said, what you still doing when I opened up, the Rupert? door, I found him sitting up in bed, shivering. That nigga shoot. What is it, Rupert? I... I saw it. I saw it again. The see? demon. It's here. I took a deep breath and went over to reassure him, thinking he was just disoriented. There is no demon, Rupert. Yeah, Rupert. It was just a bad dream. Rupert on the scenes. Go to sleep. No. It's here. I saw it go down the hall. You have to believe me. I would have said which way He's so I can go to looking way. for someone. I decided I had to investigate if only to calm him down. Oh, I promised him I would check the place out and went into the hallway. I was about to return to the surveillance room when I heard another noise, this time louder, coming from down the hall. I thought maybe some other old man had gotten out of bed. My duty was to make sure everyone was okay, yeah, so I followed you, the sound, which led me to a room that was usually empty. The door was open and I could see a shadow inside. Who's in there? I would have locked that motherfucker. No one answered. I pushed the door carefully and what I saw inside chilled my blood. The room was in darkness. At first, I thought my eyes were playing Damn, tricks on you me. In the, closet with in the corner, next to the bed, there was something. Something I couldn't completely describe. It looked like a person, but it wasn't. Its body seemed to be made of some kind of dark material, as if its skin was covered with a sticky, wet substance. It was a humanoid figure. Yeah, a lot. But everything about it was enough. deformed. Its face, if it could be called a face, was a mixture of rotting flesh and exposed oh, bones. Ugly. It had a smile that stretched too wide, revealing teeth. yellowish teeth that looked razor sharp. His eyes, or what was left of them, were two black sockets that seemed to absorb what little light there was in the room. For a moment, I couldn't move. My body was paralyzed with terror. The being turned towards me as if barely aware of my presence. The sound it made as it did so was like the sound of bones crunching. A foul odor filled the room, a stench that mixed with the aroma of rotting flesh and mold. It was then that I realized that this monster was dripping something onto the floor, a black, slimy substance that seemed to seep into the cracks of the wooden floor. I backed away slowly. My whole body was shaking and my breathing was accelerating uncontrollably. The monster moved slowly towards me, dragging a deformed leg with a sickening sound that made my skin crawl. Then, without warning, the thing lunged at me. It was a quick, unnatural movement. Before it reached me, I ran as fast as I could to my sentry box. I had to grab my keys and leave as soon as possible. As soon as I got there, I took a moment to catch my breath. I looked at the security cameras, hoping to see something, anything, to confirm yeah, what I had see. seen. But the cameras only showed the corridors, empty, as usual. I ran a trembling hand over my face, trying to think clearly. I had to do something. I had to make sure that that oh, thing was that. not still in the building. At that moment, I thought about leaving, running as soon as possible and escaping from that place. But before I could, I heard the scream of an old man. I didn't have time to call the police, 
And I certainly couldn't run away and leave all these old people alone and unprotected with that thing. I couldn't just abandon them. Not without doing something to protect them. But what could I do? I had no weapons, not even a clear idea of what I was facing. I ran, looking for the source of the scream, but quickly realized I didn't know where to go. I decided to check all the rooms one by one, making sure all the residents were okay. Each door I opened filled me with a mixture of relief and dread, hoping not to find anything out of the ordinary. But the constant fear was wearing me down. I knew I couldn't go on like this all night. Then, as I was checking one of the rooms, I heard a loud noise coming from the other end of the hallway. It was a sound that didn't belong to the building, as if something metallic had fallen. I, unlocked I immediately turned and ran to the source of the sound. When I got there, I saw that one of the doors was open, something that never should happen. My first thought was that one of the residents had panicked and escaped. I looked around, but saw nothing. I ran to the courtyard of the place, thinking I would find an old man. Until I saw him. At the back of the courtyard was Rupert. Rupert, what are you doing here? The demon. It was coming for someone. You didn't believe me. I told you he was coming for someone. Sir, we have to go. You were right. There's, there's something here. I know. I've already found it. He didn't want me. It was all an accident. He was looking for you. Oh, that shit again. He wanted to do this to you. I was deal, Ning. As soon as I saw Rupert, Let me I recoiled in terror. I turned I around know, and went back into the nursing yeah. home. As I closed the door, I looked up again. That was not Rupert. His body was the same as the being that had tormented me before. It was as if in that second that I didn't see him. He had returned to that form. The monster stared at me for a few seconds and then oh, ran at man. full speed towards me. In just a second, I managed to close the door. I began to run desperately. I had nowhere to go. I didn't even think I could defend the elders. I would surely bring them more trouble. That thing Nigga, you was after me. Bro. Panicked and not knowing what to do, I locked myself in one of the rooms, the one farthest from where I had seen that thing last. You saying to me? I blocked the door with everything I could find. A chair, a table, even a bed. I curled up in a corner with my back against the wall. My body shaking uncontrollably. Minutes <laughs> passed. That nigga was shaking I began to hear noises. There were noises from all the old people in the nursing home. They were screaming in desperation. One by one. I could hear their screams of pain piercing the whole place. The screams. <laughs> they were dying. Damn. They were dying one by one. Hey, this shit better not be based on I stood you. behind the door, crying. I was terrified. Where your phone I couldn't at, muster the strength to go and defend them. What could I do? I would die too. I fell to the ground, feeling pathetic. A coward. I had failed them. Should have called 911. Yeah, we're trying to be brave. A few minutes passed, and I could no longer hear the monster. But neither could I hear any old person screaming. I was about to peek out. But then suddenly, that thing saw me through the window in the door, Damn and it started to bang on it. I got scared. And I could hear it banging and scratching and scratching and banging. I covered my ears, but the sound continued, getting louder and louder. The scratching turned into more pounding, and then more and more and more. The door was wobbling under the weight of those impacts, and I knew it wouldn't hold much longer. The door was giving way. Oh, that's the opening up. I didn't scream. 
I didn't have the strength to do so. I just put your hands up. I would have been there. in that bed like, man, fuck it. Paralyzed. There was no way to survive. Only to wait for the Bro, worst. Don't give up, dude. And at the worst possible moment, when the door was about to give way, the pounding stopped. Watch that I stood thing still he for a few everybody. minutes, Watch waiting it. for whatever had to happen to happen, but nothing did. Assuming the worst, I slowly opened the door. What I found when I opened the door was something that... Something I couldn't believe. Something that challenged my entire perception of reality. I saw the worst thing I could see. All the beds. All the old people. The whole place. Was in perfect condition. Boy, there were no injuries. Smoking, boy. No broken beds. Nothing. The only thing that had been damaged was the door where I was hiding. Yo, and uh, smoking and I don't shit. know how long it's been since that night. But I haven't been back. Now I'm still working as a caretaker, but in clubs or bars. Yeah. I always work in places where there are a lot of people. I will never again risk going. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you stay tuned. Mohi coming soon and we out.